All right, so let's get to taxable income. Taxable income is determined by subtracting your deductions from your adjusted gross income, okay? And when we talk about deductions, there is something called a standard deduction. Okay. And then there's also what's called itemized deductions. Okay. So a standard deduction is a fixed set amount, okay, depending on your filing status. So if you're single, it's one amount. If you're married filing jointly, it's, I think, double that. Okay. Um, and the idea is, I think, that to help simplify things, um, if you don't have a huge amount in deductions, you can just use this standard deduction instead, and that way you don't have to track every receipt and things like that, okay? But if you have a lot of deductions, then, you know, you, you want to use those instead, then, then you track those, okay? So itemized deductions are, are your actual deductions. So that's things like the amount of money that you pay in income taxes and property taxes and medical expenses and mortgage interest and charitable donations. Those are all deductions, okay? Sales tax, you don't have to pay tax on tax. So you can actually take the amount of sales tax you paid over the year and deduct that, okay? Now, that's kind of a, a painful tracking process, right? I, I don't keep every receipt from everything I've bought over the year, which means that I can't use my sales tax as a deduction, okay? But if I wanted to, then, then I would have to, you know, keep track of that. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give you a little bit of history. Prior to 2018, when they wrote a new tax law, there was also something called personal exemptions. And an exemption was just a fixed dollar amount per person, right? I, and, and in 2018, I think it was $4,050, okay? So everybody that was a dependent, including the person themselves who are filing taxes, count as a person and you subtract that amount, okay? So what it was is it was just sort of like a straight off the top, we're gonna to take away from your income based on how many people are, you know, in this group that we're filing taxes for, okay? Starting in 2018, they got rid of that and instead they increased the size of the standard deduction, right? They, they doubled it. All right, so we'll look at that in a minute. Filing status, all right? Uh, in this class, we're only going to talk about maybe a couple of these, but, but I want to list some of these out. There's a lot of different statuses for how you file, right? So, you know, obviously the, the, the single is like the, the default simple one, right? If you're just one person by yourself, okay, uh, you know, you're not married or you're legally separated or you're divorced, um, then you, you file a single, okay? If you're married, you can marry you can be married and file your tax return together, or the two of you can file separately, okay? Um, typically, filing jointly is going to be better, especially if you make um, different levels of, of income, okay? Because the married filing jointly, it's sort of like everything is not quite, but like almost doubled from single, okay? Um, so, We'll, we'll look at why this makes a difference later, but if, if you and your spouse don't make the same amount of money, then married filing jointly will save the two of you together money on your taxes, typically. All right. Um, you can also file as a head of household. So this is going to be a situation where you have dependents um, that live with you, such as children, but it could also be like if you're taking care of like, you know, elderly parents or something like that. Okay. But you're not married. Okay. Um, now, the thing is, when, when we talk about dependents, whether we're like, you know, married and we're talking about kids or head of household, a dependent can only be on one single tax return, okay? So part of being a dependent is the person filing has to have paid more than half of the cost of, of you know, upkeep for you, okay? Which means that you can't have two people that have both paid more than half, right? So you can't have two tax returns that, that have a, a person on them, right? So, you know, when you talk about kids, if you have maybe two people that have kids, but they're not married, they can't both claim the children. You can maybe split the children up. One person gets this child, one person gets that child on their taxes, okay? But you, you can't both take them. 
Okay. Um, there's also a separate filing status for being a widow or widower. Okay. Um, earlier, we talked about this idea of a standard deduction. Let me, let me go back and look at that. The standard deduction is different based on your filing status. And I didn't label all of the filing statuses here, but, but here's some of them. Single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, and head of household. Okay. Notice that the married filing jointly is more than double of the married filing separately. Okay. So you, you typically have to have a very good reason to be to be married and, and file separately. Okay. Um, head of household, you kind of get a bump from being single, but it's not quite the same as as being two two you know income earners. I think the the idea behind it is married, you have two adults with a bunch of dependents. Okay. Head of household, you have one adult with a bunch of dependents, right? Single, you don't have any dependents. All right. Now, this is the value of the standard deduction. What's important to note is that the standard deduction or your itemized deductions, right? You, you take that money off of your taxes. So whichever one is bigger is the one you want to take, but you can't take both. So I can't say like, oh, I donated 200 bucks to charity. Can I take my 12,400 and also my 200? No, it's one or the other. And it only makes sense to take the bigger of the two. So if you take your standard deduction, then your itemized deductions don't really mean anything. Okay. So let's look at an example. Suppose Robert has $3,200 in work expenses, a $500 car that he donated to charity, and $1,200 worth of items for his classroom. Okay. So these are, again, examples of things that are deductions. Uh, money that you have to spend as part of your job, um, you, you can deduct off your taxes. Okay. So um, like if you have to buy your own uniform or something like that, okay, you can take that as a deduction. Uh, donations to charity are a deduction. If you're a teacher and you spend money on stuff for your classroom, that, that's a deduction. Okay, so if I add these up, the total of our itemized deductions we have three thousand two hundred dollars plus five thousand dollars plus twelve hundred dollars, and when we add these up, we get nine thousand four hundred dollars. Okay. Robert's filing as an individual. And for an individual, the standard deduction is $12,400. That's worth more. So in this case, uh, Robert should use the standard deduction, and then he would not use his itemized deductions. Okay, so his deduction is $12,400. Okay, let's look at another example. Rose is filing as a head of household. She has $4,000 in uh, sales tax to deduct, $9,000 in qualifying health insurance premiums, and $6,200 she paid for babysitters, and then $1,000 to her church. So again, these are all deductions. So you can deduct the sales tax that you paid over the year. Health insurance is a little bit tricky, okay? A health savings plan that's taken out of your paycheck ahead of time, you can deduct all of it. For medical expenses though, um, including the premiums for your health insurance, you can only deduct them if they're at least 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, okay? So again, with things like deductions, that's where things get tricky. And that's why a lot of people get scared about filing their own taxes because there are a lot of questions that come up that sometimes you don't know answers to. Okay. All right. So if you have a lot of, of health expenses, you, you might want to look into that and see, okay, is this, is this qualifies a deduction or not? Okay. And it's not, you know, that it's not that hard to figure out. You look at your adjusted gross income, 7.5% of that, you know, is that more, um, Okay, so let's so let's look at this. So here are itemized deductions. We have our four thousand dollars in sales tax. 
we have our $9,000 in health expenses. We have $6,200 for babysitting that you can deduct. A $1,000 uh, donation to church. Okay, church is a, a charity, so you can deduct that. Okay, so we end up with a total of $20,200. Okay. Rose's filing is a head of household, so her standard deduction is $18,650. Since her itemized deductions are higher, she would use her itemized deductions and then not the standard deduction. Okay. Okay, so again, it's one or the other, whichever one is bigger, you don't get to ever combine them. Okay, that's deductions.